Hi there, welcome to Simon Anderson Photography and today I'm going to be talking a bit about long exposures. Now what is a long exposure? Well to me that's when uh, the shutter length exceeds one second and above. Uh, one second, five seconds, twenty seconds, thirty seconds and they're going on into minutes and some people even hours. Uh, the beauty of that is you can get some very creative shots. Uh, long exposure photography seems to have boomed now thanks to the 10 stop filters. Today I'm just going to show you a bit of the equipment I use uh, to get some of them long exposures. Uh, a bit later hopefully I'll post up some pictures for you to see as well. Uh, let's have a look and see what's here. Uh, one of the most important things is the 10 stop filters. Now 10 stop filters hold back 10 stops of light. Uh, so if you've got a, a shutter length for the scene in front of you, which uh, you've exposed for about a thirtieth of a second, uh, you put a 10 stop filter on your lens that will now change to roughly 30 second exposure. Uh, there's two types of uh, filters. You've got the circular filter, which is the screwing uh, variety. It has a filter thread and it screws into the end of your lens just like a polarizer or a UV filter. So uh, this was the first filter I bought. This is a BMW. It's amazing quality. Uh, unfortunately, I just got a bit fed up of unscrewing it or unscrewing it back on every time I needed to recompose or refocus the shot. It's a bit very time consuming, that is. So, but I still keep that as a backup if I ever need it. It stays in my bag. Uh, the other variety is the square filters, which come in roughly 100, I think, well, this one is 100mm, uh, which is uh, for ultra wide angle, so you can't see uh, the ends of the filter holder uh, through the lens. Um, you do get 84mm filter as well, which is a lot smaller, but um, I used 100mm. I say it's especially designed for ultra wide angle lens, which is great for my 1020. Uh, so, to use the, let me just show you as well, as you can see, you can be very, very dark. But uh, the beauty about the square filter is uh, you can stack it with other filters, it just slides. Little slots straight in and out your filter holder, and if you need to recompose, you just take it out, recompose, refocus, and slide it straight back in. Uh, this is the Format High Tech Probe 10 stop filter. There is also the Lee Big Stopper, which is the more popular one, but it's very hard to get hold of, it's always on back order and stuff. Shame on you, Lee. But um, I do recommend uh, the High Tech, it's very, very good quality. And it does, does exactly what I need it to do. <clears throat> so how do I use the, ten, uh, the square filter? Well, what I do is I've got um, some filter adapters, adapter rings. Now these adapter rings, these fit onto the end of your lens and then you slot on the adapter, uh, the filter holder. Now the beauty of this is uh, you get different sizes of adapter rings. This is the 67mm, which fits on my Nikon 1625, which I'm using now to film this. And also, I've got uh, the 77mm. Now, these are the ultra thin ones, which, once again, designed for very wide angles, which are a bit more expensive, but highly recommend. Now, the beauty of this is I can use this one on my 1020, my Sigma 1020, or I can use it on my Sigma 70 to 200. And I think I can use 67mm on um, my macro lens as well, so you can use your filters on all your lenses. That's absolutely brilliant. Let's take off the filter because we don't need that, we can't use that with the filter holder. So, what we do, take the lens cap off, you get your uh, adapter ring, this is the 77mm one, uh, you just screw it on there like you would a polarizer again, uh, that fits on nice and snug. Then you get your filter holder and pull the clip out and that just clips in place. Now this should move quite freely as well, which is uh, where you would use ND grads, which I'll show you in just a second. So here's your 10 stop filter. You'd uh, have this on your camera, the lens. You'd have already uh, composed your shot and focused uh, and set your exposure and everything like that. And then what you do is you'd slot your 10 stop filter into the filter adapter, closest to the lens, there we go, and the reason you put it on closest to the lens is because the 10 stop filters have a foam gasket around the edge, just to stop light leakage. Now, 
The good thing about uh, this system is you can use ND grads, which I've set here, which is I have the 0.3, 0.6, and 0.9 Lee hard ND grads. Uh, the 0.3 is a one stop, as you see, it's very, it's not very dark at the top. The 0.6 holds back two stops as light, it's a bit darker. And then uh, this one is uh, 0.9, which gets very dark at the top. Now, you'd normally use these to expose or correct the exposure between the sky and the foreground. So you'd slot this in your filter, move it up and down, so the line goes across the horizon, so uh, the sky's a lot darker, matches the exposure with uh, the foreground. Now what we'd do is, if we're doing a long exposure, I'd use my free stop ND grad to really darken that sky, like over darken the sky, to make it really dramatic, because uh, do transfer a lot of pictures into black and white, and in moment they look very good. So then I would slide the filter so the dark bit covers the sky. Once that's all done, then I will put my 10 stop filter into the slot behind the ND grad and closest to the lens to stop any light leakage. And then I will take my shot, hopefully get something very, very dramatic. So I'll leave that there. There's that. Uh, what else do we need for long exposures? Uh, another important thing is your tripod. I can't show you that now because I'm using it to film this video. But a tripod, it's best to have a nice sturdy tripod. Uh, if you're doing exposures for 30 seconds, a minute or even longer, you know, it's a bit windy, you just don't want that, the, the camera shaking at all because it will show up in your shot. You need it um, rock steady, so you need a good tripod. Uh, the other thing you need is um, a cable release. There are a couple of kinds. Uh, this is just a manual cable release, which is just a button and a lock. Now, a camera is normally, you can put, set the exposure to 120, but a maximum of 30 seconds where it times it for you. Now, with a manual cable release, if you need to go over 30 seconds, then what you need to do is time it yourself by putting the camera in bulb mode. Uh, what that means is, once you put it in bulb mode, <clears throat> when you press the shutter button, however long you hold it in, keeps the shutter open. When you release it, the shutter will close, so you need to time that yourself. And this is where you'd use the lock. So you might need a stopwatch for this, like on your phone, or use your watch and time it. So if it's a minute exposure, you would push the lock in place, the button in lock in place, to keep that shutter open, time one minute, and then release the shutter button, and that's your exposure. Uh, what I use now is a, an intervalometer, I think that's what it's called, which has a digital display. Uh, you can pick these up, oh, I've got this off Amazon for £13, this one is for the D7100 which I'm using now, also have one for the D300S which is here. Uh, the beauty of this one is an LCD screen so you can actually type the, the exposure in manually uh, by using the cursors, you just uh, change the numbers so if it's uh, 1 minute or 5 seconds you just dial that in and press the start button and then press, press sorry, and then once you press the start button it will count down the timer and then close the shutter when it's finished and you know you can fine tune it to exactly to your needs and I highly recommend that, it's a brilliant piece of kit. Now how do you time your shots? Uh, there's a couple of ways. Uh, on the internet you can download neutral density filter charts which I have here, which I've downloaded one to show you. There we go, I don't know if you can see that. I'll read it out to you in a second, but also now with everyone with iPhones and Android phones you can download apps that do this for you, where uh, you can type it in and it will work out the exposure again for you and you just dial that in manually into your camera. Now, uh, this one, if I look at a density chart, along the top we have your unfiltered exposure length for the scene in front of you, and then your filtrated uh, exposure length down this side so you just correspond the two so if you've got an exposure length of 125th of a second uh, you go down to 10 stops and then your exposure will be roughly 8 seconds now it's not always going to be perfect but you just fine tune it yourself you take your picture look on the back of the LCD screen uh, check your highlights uh, make sure you're not clipping the highlights uh, so if anything's flashing on the screen just readjust it to make it a bit darker by shortening the exposure length or if you need it lighter just increase the exposure length and once again that's the beauty of uh, the LCD screen one you can set a couple of seconds here and there and let it do its thing. So that's basically all the equipment I use. Uh, next I will be showing you 
how to do a custom white balance out in the field. This is a quick uh, method that I, I learned online. I can't remember who it was from, but it's a great technique. Uh, just stay with me and I'll show you that in just a minute. Right, for this section of the video, I'm going to show you how to do a custom white balance out in the field. A very simple uh, technique. Uh, the reason you might want to use a custom white balance with long exposures is uh, N Tensile ND filters give you funny colour casts. Now, people think, oh, well, that's fine, I'll do it out in the. F I'll take a picture wherever I am and then import it to Photoshop and then you know, correct the white balance there. Uh, but I like to get right in camera because uh, sometimes when I've corrected the white balance on the computer it's uh, blown my highlights out, I've lost detail where the colour temperature is so vast you know it, it does some funny things to it so I like to get it right in camera first of all and then just when you colour correct it later you know, it's only fine adjustments uh, just to help it along so that's the reason I do that now what do we need? obviously I've got here my camera, my D300S Got my ND 10 stop filter, um, Sigma 1020 lens. Uh, I've also got my Lee Foundation kit and filter ring adapter. Now, this is just a, a guideline I'm just going to quickly show you. Uh, for your custom white balance, you will have to check the manual of your camera because I'll be showing you how I know how to do it on my D300S. Uh, so, first of all, I'm just going to put my Sigma 1020 onto the D300S body. like so. Uh, then what I'm going to do is put my filter holder or adapter ring onto the, the lens. And then the adapter or the filter holder. So that's all now in place. Now what do you need to do? Now what I do is uh, switch the camera on. Uh, what you also need to do is you might have the Sigma 1020, you might be using, like, I use my 16 to 85 Nikon. Uh, whatever it is, you zoom in as far as possible. So on the 1020, I'm going to zoom into the 20mm. On my 16 to 85, I'll zoom in to 85. Uh, also, then what I will do is I'll put my ISO up to the maximum it will go, which uh, on a D300, this is 6400. This all may sound, may sound a bit strange, but at the end of it, you will understand why I'm doing all this. So go to your maximum ISO. Uh, next, you need to go to your widest aperture, which on this lens is uh, about 20 mm about f5.6. Uh, uh, if you've got, you can go wider, just go wider. You basically just want to let in as much light as possible. You don't need a tripod for this bit, you will handhold this bit. Uh, so now we've done that. Uh, also, you need to uh, focus in manual mode, so switch to manual. Uh, this may sound strange, what you do is you turn the filter so it's totally out of focus. So basically, what you want to do is let as much light into the lens as possible and have the image totally blurry. All right. Next, what we're going to do is slot in our 10 stop filter into the filter thread closest to the lens. Now, what we need to do is uh, do the custom white balance. On my D300S, uh, I need to put it on PRE, which is preset. I don't know what the other options are, like on Canon and Pentax and Sony. Uh, like I say, you will need to check your manual. Uh, the white balance is basically the top there. Uh, you know where all the settings are, where you put in for like um, flash, or incandescent or any of them lighting settings, but we want pre, we want to preset it ourselves. Now, when you put it on uh, to the preset, what you need to do is on the D300S, we press the white balance button and hold it in until pre is flashing. Now, what we want to do is point our camera up to uh, the sky towards perhaps a dark cloud if we're doing long exposures. So it's, a lot of the time, there are sort of moody clouds out there when we're doing that. So you want to point your camera up to a, like a dark greyish cloud which is going to be like our grey card basically. So then what we do is we press white balance, hold it in, the pre flashes, you point your camera up to the cloud, zoom as much as possible 
uh, press your shutter button. Then what that does is it creates a custom white balance and tries to correct in camera the colour cast on the 10 stop filter. And that's the reason why we blur the picture, because basically we don't need any detail in the cloud for this. All we want is the cloud to act as our grey card, so we want it all smooth and fuzzy, out of focus. Uh, the reason we've got a high wide or wide aperture and high ISO is that it's much lighting, so we can hand hold the camera uh, with a 10 stop filter on to let that light through so the camera can work out a custom white balance. Now it doesn't always work straight away, you might have to do it a few times or change direction to a different part of the sky in the clouds. But once you've done that and you press the on when the is flashing and you press it looking up at the clouds, uh, if the custom white balance works, then on my camera you can have good come across the LCD screen at the top. Now that means you know your camera has worked out uh, the correct white balance uh, for that situation. Or that's, you know, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be as good as you can get uh, without actually getting out grey cards and stuff like that. And once you've done it a few times, it's, it only takes about 10, 20 seconds to do. And then you can get a, a custom white balance for that scene in front of you and get rid of that colour cast. So when you go get onto your computer, a lot of the work's done for you. Uh, I found this out online. I can't remember who who actually done it, but it is a very effective technique and I highly recommend that. Uh, so you can give that a go. Once again, you do not need a tripod, just put it up to the cloud with all the uh, things I've just told you to do and then press the button, you're going to get your custom white balance. Uh, I hope that helps you out. Uh, leave me a comment below if it has or if you've got any sort of feedback on it. Uh, hopefully I'll post some pictures at the end of the video to show you some of the pictures I get with my camera, uh, and also um, I possibly might, you know, at the end of this video, actually go down the beach and film me taking a shot with all my settings, uh, so you can see how I do it out in the field as well. Okay, so hang on and wait for the next part of the video. Thank you. Right, here we are down the beach. Uh, this is a beach in Pevensey. Uh, in East Sussex, the UK. I've come down here to show you how I set up my camera to do a long exposure. I'll be uh, telling you the settings and showing you some of the equipment I showed you earlier in the video and I'll put it all together to get a nice long exposure. As you can see, I've got my camera set up on the tripod on my Manfrotto 055X Pro B, a nice sturdy tripod, very heavy, good for windy situations like today. Uh, so sorry about that if uh, the sound isn't too good, but it is very windy here. Uh, as you can see the waves are coming in on the beach, which is good for long exposure because we're going to try and smooth them out. And there's a bit of cloud in the sky just on the, over the horizon there. Right, so what have we got here? I've got here my intervalometer. It's already set up for 30 second exposure. Uh, on the camera, uh, to get an exposure of a 30th of a second without using the ND, uh, sorry, the 10 stop filter, uh, I've had to use an aperture of f20, a very small aperture, so don't let in a lot of light, which is still quite bright out here today. Uh, an ISO of 100 as well, so the sensor's not as sensitive to light. So we're trying to hold back as much light as possible to extend the exposure without the filter. Uh, so I've managed to get 1 30th of a second. Uh, I've put in the 10 stop filter which now makes it a 30 second exposure. I've got my Sigma 10 20 set to 14 millimeter. And also I've got in uh, my Lee 0.9 hard ND grad which I've got running along the horizon to try and darken the sky down even more. It might be a bit over the top but um, just so I can show you the effects I can get by using that filter by darkening that sky. Uh, the camera is in bulb mode like we described earlier. As it's a 30 second exposure you could actually set that in the camera but I always use my intervalometer anyway. Uh, so if I wanted to extend it to 40 seconds I just uh, type that into the intervalometer and uh, press the button away we go. So here we go, we're going to press the, uh, the button. I better switch the camera on. There we go, the camera's on. 
Uh, also, I forgot to mention, I've also got the custom white balance, which we discussed earlier, already set into the camera. So the custom white balance is already there. We're all good to go. We're just going to press the button. 30 seconds. It's going to count down. Inter intervalometer. It's going to count down. When it gets to zero, it's going to shut the shutter again, and that'd be our exposure. Uh, we're using the groins here as a lead-in line. I've come down quickly and found this. Uh, lucky enough, the sun is behind us, which is good. Uh, the sea hopefully will smooth out nicely, and hopefully we we'll get some nice dark sky at the back there to make it very dramatic. Okay, there we go. Nice bit of coastline there. There's my camera on the tripod. You can see the sun's behind us by the shadow uh, of the tripod and camera on the beach. Like I say, all the rules of photography apply to long exposures, rules of composition, the rules of thirds. Uh, they, they apply to this photography, uh, long exposure photography as well. All we're doing is extending that shutter length to get some nice creative shots. Okay, I've taken the picture. I'm uh, going to go back and process it and then upload it to the video so you can see the shot we took with all the settings and equipment we discussed earlier. See you later.